Now, India all set to host the crucial meeting of G20 foreign ministers. The two-day summit begins later today and ministers, they've started arriving in New Delhi. Remember, this meeting is taking place under the shadow of the war in Ukraine and spiraling U.S.-China tensions. All eyes are on India and what role it can play as G20 head in getting the joint communique passed. India's Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Quatra held a press conference before the G20 foreign ministers meet. While answering Vion's question on India's plan to bridge the gap between the West and Russia and whether a joint statement will be issued at the end of the summit. Quatra says that he cannot prejudge the outcome. Thank you very much. And very the issues that we face on the reform of multilateralism, each one of them is a very, very significant and a substantial issue which is absolutely crucial for the Global South. Uh, I have no reason to doubt that each of these agenda items will receive its due focus when the foreign ministers meet tomorrow and hold their discussions. Uh, it is not for me to prejudge uh, uh, the outcome of those discussions. Remember the G20 foreign ministers meet. It's being held days after a meet of the finance ministers of the bloc in Bengaluru, where the leaders failed to reach consensus and meet ended without a joint communique. After China and Russia declined to sign a joint statement condemning Moscow for its war in Ukraine. Meanwhile, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has reached New Delhi for the G20 Foreign Ministers meeting. He will also be attending the Raisena Dialogue 2023. The Russian Foreign Ministry has released a statement which said, and I'm quoting here, We support India's G20 presidency in commitment to promoting a unifying agenda that will restore confidence in multilateral diplomacy and prevent the fragmentation of the global economy. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will be reaching New Delhi later today as well. And according to U.S. top officials, Blinken will underscore the damage that Russia's war of aggression has caused and further urge nations to redouble calls for Russia to end the war. Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong has also arrived in India. This is her first visit to India as Foreign Minister. Indian External Affairs Minister Dr. Shri Shankar also announced the arrival of Turkey's Foreign Minister to India. Both the ministers discussed bilateral relations on the sidelines of the G20 meeting. Taking to Twitter, the Turkish Foreign Minister said that he met with India's External Affairs Minister and has thanked him for, cooperation, for Operation Dost, which is the search and rescue operation initiated by the Indian government to help earthquake hit Turkey and Syria. Jay Shankar also held bilateral talks with his Brazilian counterpart and discussed issues that will be tabled at the G20 foreign ministers meeting. In the latest, Jay Shankar also held talks with Britain's foreign minister James Cleverley. The Indian foreign minister said that the two leaders held discussions on the global situation as well as the G20 agenda. Meanwhile, according to reports, Japan's foreign minister will not be attending the upcoming G20 meet due to domestic parliamentary session. For more on this, we're now joined by Sidhan Sibyl, our principal diplomatic correspondent from New Delhi. Sidhan, thank you so much for joining us. What can you tell us of the larger G20 agenda? We know that Russia and Ukraine war is likely to dominate discussions. Well, Haim, there will be two key sessions uh, that will take place tomorrow when the key day of the G20 foreign ministers meeting takes place here in Delhi. Uh, they will be focusing on issues like reform, multilateralism, on the issue of global skill mapping, counter-terrorism, food security issues, something that has been dominating the agenda and discussion when it comes to the global south. We have seen price rise, especially impacting smaller countries, whether it's in uh, the Indian subcontinent or in Africa. But essentially, India will be making sure that um, the voice of the Global South is represented through it. Remember, in the month of January, India hosted the uh, Voice of the Global South Summit and uh, there were leaders, there were countries, over uh, over 100 countries participated in that. So that will also feed into uh, the discussion that will take place. But very hmm. important day as Delhi becomes uh, the diplomatic capital of the world with the participation of uh, 
around 40 delegations and over 35 foreign ministers. Right, absolutely, Siddhant. As I mentioned earlier as well, all eyes are on India and what role it can play as G20 head in getting the joint communique passed. What can we expect on that front? Well, getting the joint communique will be a tough task. We saw what happened in the finance minister's meeting in Bangalore. There were issues. Uh, uh, India came out with a chase statement and an outcome document, an outcome document that focused on issues like debt issue and cryptocurrency. But remember, it is the Russia-Ukraine conflict that is dividing the grouping. It's 18 versus the two, that's uh, 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 versus the two, Russia and China. And how India can bridge the divide between West and Russia is something that will be closely watched. Uh, one another issue issue that problem has arose is that how Russia and China have been opposing two key paras of the Bali declaration, a question that was asked at the Foreign Secretary's briefing here in Delhi earlier today to which the spokesperson of the Indian Ministry of External Affairs pointed that this question should be posed to those countries. So it will be a long haul before we can see some kind of outcomes from the day-long meeting. Right. Siddhan, thank you so much for joining us with all your inputs on this. We will, of course, continue to track the developments very closely. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.